Welcome to Deeply Disturbing Things, the podcast. I'm Macy. And I'm Naomi. And we're two hot counselors. Temperature-wise, at least. <laughs> who like to talk about deeply disturbing things. This is our therapy. Thanks for being here. Let's dive in. Skull. Skull. I've only, is that off Vikings? That's Norwegian. Mm-hmm. That would be where I know it from. Okay. <laughs> So check-ins. Uh, well, got? we just got back from skating out in almost 100 degree weather. Yeah. And it was really hot, and then we got popsicles, so now we're here. Popsicles were bomb, just so you know. Coconut. Coconut, Coconut popsicles are really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I went on my first ever yacht ride during my friend's bachelorette party that over very the weekend. Fancy. I felt fancy on a yacht. Was it a three-hour tour? It actually was about the two and a half hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was fun. I saw a ton of dolphins. That was cool. Oh, yeah. I love dolphins. Um, while you were doing that, I was shoveling gravel and soil and moving large rocks around for three days straight. Would you rather be on a yacht? Well, I am going to have a really cute patio when I'm done, but... Um, by winter, by winter time. My goal is to have a ten before actual summer starts officially, like the June twenty first date. That'd be good. Cool. Yeah. That's all I have. All right, that's all I have to. Do. Skating. It's hot. Rocks. It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. We have we some wine. Obviously, Cheers. moved into a new room again. The baby room. Back to the baby room. Baby got back. Back to basics. Back to baby basics. <laughs> And we did that because the other room sounded a little hollow and echoey, and we wanted to see if this room would be better. But the trade-off is it's sweltering hot up here, and the other room was nice and cool. It seems like there's <laughs> there's always like something. There's so always something. We're problem. we're gonna weigh it out and then pick the lesser of the evils across the board. We have the world's tiniest and cheapest AC window box cranked right now it's kind Hopefully of like if someone, if someone blew on your neck yes yeah, like they had on your neck no we don't want the hot breath like but maybe if they had like an ice cube in their mouth and then they, i don't think it's that cold it's not that good it's no. not that cold maybe no. if they drank ice water and water an hour before and then yeah like their, blow it on our neck. their mouth was faintly cool all right you get to go first today I'm let's so excited. Just do this. Don't look, because we're really close together. I'm not looking. I don't. I'm. I'm gonna just look at myself in the camera. <laughs> I need my peachy folder divider between us. So this was in the news a couple of years ago, pretty heavily. Do you remember the Turpin family and the House of Horrors? From where? California. Do you remember these faces and that guy's haircut? Yes, I do. You can actually show them now because oh. you're so close. Look at this. Oh, you're not left out now, people. How do you not? How do you forget about that haircut? That bowl, that bowl cut that looks like my hair again. Why are all these people on my haircut? <laughs> so that's David and Louise Turpin. So this was in the news. Um, it was a big, huge story, and this was from a little over. Well, it was January 2018, so almost three years now, right? Right, right. So on January 14th, 2018, a Turpin child escaped from her large suburban home in California and called the police. She was 17 years old, but she looked like she was 10. All malnourished. She'd found an old cell phone and had been using it to post to a secret YouTube account. She sad, sang sad songs, original songs about wanting to be free, and she posted these from the laundry room of the house. Aww. So she had this phone, this old cell phone, and she waited for almost two years for the right opportunity to be able to escape and use the cell phone to call the police. Wow. 
she That'd called so 911. Scary. So yeah. scary. She called 911 from this phone. So it was disconnected, but you could, I guess, use it for emergency calls probably like, without yeah. service. And she told. I didn't know that. Really? No. No. Good to know. Yeah. She told the 911 operator that her and her 12 siblings were held captive and abused, tortured, and starved. She told the police, they will wake me up at night and they will start crying and they wanted me to call somebody. I wanted to call y'all so you all can help my sisters. She had never seen a police officer and didn't know what a hospital or medication was. Wow. So the police um, went to her house and knocked on the door and Louise answered and she seemed really confused about why they were there mm -hmm. and um, didn't want to let them get in, but they were able to see enough to be able to be evidence yeah. to just be able to go right in. Mm -hmm. um, and that was good because they were able to see the kids were actually chained to beds. Wow, they saw that from the doorway? Well, no, they went in and oh, they were able to see that. Got it. But mm -hmm. if they had had hadn't seen enough evidence or had enough evidence to be able to go in, they might not have like actually they witnessed it. It might have something. been hit, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they had enough evidence to enter and they saw kids actually chained to beds. They said it was a foul odor. There was garbage everywhere. There was feces and urine just soaked into the carpets mm -hmm. because the kids weren't allowed to use the bathroom. They were chained to the beds. And so what are you going to do? Got to do what you're going to do. You're going to piddle yourself. Yeah. So the police found that there were 13 children living in squalor. Just so you, no, just so you know, I can't actually read any of that from this distance sideways on your screen. So like, you don't have to hide it from me. I, I can't like see it. Like I can see. I feel like I'm taking the letters. SAT and you're trying to copy off my answers. My Scantron. I'm trying to see my <laughs> Scantron pattern. And it all sees. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the kids ranged in age. There was a baby, a two-year-old, all the way up to age 29. So APS and CPS were called in. Adult Protective Services and Child uh, Protective Services. Child Protective Services, yes, because some were minors and some were not minors. And the, they were all immediately given food and drinks because they were so emaciated. Mm -hmm. Except the baby. The baby was not starved. So the kids said that when they had first started getting tied up, it had been with ropes. But then things started to escalate, and then it began to be chains. Probably they were blocks. trying to get out, yeah. So the children were covered in dirt because they were only allowed to shower once a year. What? Mm -hmm. Like what, on a birthday? It's probably like, yeah, your birthday present. That's sad. Or maybe it was like a summer But like, wouldn't it thing. benefit everybody to have them? I don't know. Teenagers that don't wash are gross. I, I'm an adult, and if I don't wash, I'm gross. I'm thinking the house was so gross and there was so much smell that that like it probably all blended in. Got it. Kind With of like feces and urine and garbage kind and like unwashed you, bodies. You had like a a house with like excessive hoarding where like they get so used to the, yeah, you get the, kind of used to it. Um. So they they could wash their hands, but only up to their wrists. So their hands would be clean mm -hmm. but you could see like a clear dirt line mm -hmm. at the wrist level and one of the Turpin children was reported to have said you wash to your wrist or you're wasting water so that was like a family motto there were new toys in the house a lot of them completely in their packaging still um, so the kids they could see these toys but they weren't allowed like, to play what's with the them point, what's the point of it it's then? like torture it would get like to hold over their heads. I don't know. Um, wow. Like you could see all these toys, like they're being brought in. I mean, who knows what kind of twisted psychological games were being played on them by mm -hmm. David and Louise Turpin. So they were allowed to journal 
Like that was the one thing they're allowed to do. And well, so that's neat. I saw photos of just like piles of notebooks. It's, I mean, not neat. Just to retract my last statement. That's, <laughs> I mean, helpful for them and for evidence later on. Yeah, because there's a lot yeah. of stuff about how miserable they were and how. I think I'm drunk already. I've had like this much wine. It's the heat. Like, and the skating right before. We haven't done that before. This combo. Yeah, we have. Not skating and then hot room. No, not skating and hot room. But and skating drinking. and podcast drinking. Th this, so just minus the This hot is room. like a three factor punch in the face. <laughs> so they found, you know, like, help me, please, you know, things written mm -hmm. like that. A neighbor said the kids could be seen marching in a circle in the middle of the night inside the house. So the parents put them on an upside down schedule. They had to sleep all day and then they were up at night. And I think that's just so Other people can see what be, they're doing. Yeah. I, gosh, just like what's the why behind this? That's a good question. I mean, that's where maybe we can yeah. throw in our psychologicalness. I'll wait till we get more. Um, a neighbor said they had seen two of the older boys digging in the trash can at night and mm -hmm. eating food that they found. The parents ate well. Like you saw pictures of them, they were not starving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they would torment their starving kids by bringing home pies, like apple pies and pumpkin pies, and they'd put them on the counter, and they would let them smell them, but not eat them. This is like... So mean. I have something in my topic that we're going to then apply to your topic. About pies? Just about these people. Okay. can't tell you more than that. I really like your necklace, by the way. It's really cool. Oh, I got it for my birthday. Mm, it's, pretty. it's a pig. A purple jade pig. <laughs> Is for that my Chinese love? zodiac. Oh, I'm a dragon. Oh. Huh. Yeah, it's purple jade. I've never had purple jade before. Um, all of the kids' names started with letter J. I think everyone in my office right now, everyone has J names. It's so confusing. It kind of reminds me of that, what's that Mormon family of the reality show? The Duggars. All their uh, kids, I think, start with the same letter as well. So Louise's sister said childhood experiences may have led to Louise becoming a sadistic parent. And maybe she was, you know, continuing a cycle of abuse. Louise's sister, her name was Teresa, said she and Louise were repeatedly sexually assaulted by their grandfather. Oh. And that the mother condoned and encouraged the abuse and actually would sell the daughters to him. So she would receive money by bringing the daughters to him. That's awful. So that has to have an impact, but then again, there's a lot of people that are sexually abused that do not torture their kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is different level. Louise met David in the 80s. She was 16 and he was 24. And they decided to get married, so they ran off and got married. And her sister said she didn't marry handsome, but she married rich. Um, are those the only two options? I guess so. <laughs> Handsome or rich? Oops, I just zoomed that way in. I saw, I saw you ladies just go. <laughs> in 15 years, they had had eight kids. Wow, that's only like a couple year break in there. No, you're constant. It's con and if you're nursing, you're like constantly, I mean, it's basically like continuously being pregnant. Because you don't, you're just attached to the kid anyway. It's just, they're outside, and now they're inside, they're outside, it's all this there. <laughs> they can just come and go as they please. <laughs> go back in, come back out, have a snack. It doesn't work. For them. It doesn't? <laughs> Unless you're a kangaroo. And then I think it does. The, the kids were dressed exactly the same. It's, it's fucking creepy. I'm sorry. Look at these photos of them, all dressed the same. 
Oh, it's like those one, the prairie dress women. Show the people. Oh, the poops. If it ends up, if you end up a bit, who knows? Um, um, yeah, I mean, all the same. Dang. Well, and. That's a lot of kids. That's a lot of, like, do you have to, like, pre-order that many shirts in that color? This they're all wearing Sing 1, Sing 2, all the way oh, up to Oh, I don't like it. 13. Nobody likes this. Those poor but, kids. Here's the thing. They were isolated from the world. They had no contact. I'm going to look at this mom's face. From the world. And so they just had no choice then to all be dressed like their siblings. And, you know, just be – I mean, the one, the 17-year-old, like, the fact that she was brave enough to get out of there – Mm -hmm. I think that's great. But I think that some of the other kids may not have Fair. had the capacity to be able to do that because they were so malnourished and neglected and yeah, deprived I mean, of stimulation that um, they suffered cognitive deficits. Oh. Yeah, especially those are like formative, formative years. Yeah. For your little brain. So they're dressed exactly the same and not get close. From the outside, it looked like a good life. I mean, they lived in nice sized houses and nice neighborhoods. Yeah, I mean, like these what wedding photos? Are these wedding photos? Or are these just oh, family photos? So here's what they did. Every year, they would go to Las Vegas and renew their vows with like an Elvis preacher. <laughs> Every year. So that's from one of them. The years. But don't these children just have like a look of horror on their face? Well, they blurred out their faces, but I think they just didn't have a choice. I mean, you have you don't have a choice when you're, you know, trapped at home. You're not allowed to leave. You yeah. you just have to go with it for survival. I'd just, like, run at a stranger. Save me! But you can think how many times kids do But you'd do be afraid, it. though. Yeah, kids do stuff like that. I've seen it of, like, like, you know, like, oh, stop it, leave them alone, come on, let's go, mm -hmm. and then and then you get, like, your ass whooped when you get home. Yeah, exactly. Well, and then there's the Stockholm Syndrome, too. Yeah. Where you have a reliance on survival on people, and so you do form bonds. Mm -hmm. Negative attachments, attachment, too. So David was an engineer. I saw some high school photos, I didn't put it on here, but... Same hair. Okay. Um, so they would always post, you know, on social media about their family trips to Vegas or Disneyland. They're obsessed with Disneyland. So they went there all the time. It's like the perfection or picture of family perfection. Except a little different. I mean, not every family has 13 kids. No, it's And a bit dresses them all the same. It's a bit excessive. Yeah. <laughs> And so things just started getting progressively worse. Um, the family withdrew from the outside world. They were secretly bankrupt. So they're living in this big house, secretly bankrupt. And there's different ideas about what that was. You know, it could be living beyond means, could be poor management of money, mm -hmm. and different things like that. All eight children were pulled out of school and taught at home at one point. And on David's bankruptcy papers, he was listed as principal of the Sandcastle Day School. So that was the home school he established. Mm. Is that your sweat on your keyboard? Um, or my spit, I'm not sure. Okay. Just don't look at it. It's my glisten, your, glisten drops. Your glisten dropped all over the place. <laughs> it's hot in here. I keep like, I feel like it's helping. No, if it was off, we would I, not be able to be up Because when we started me. this, it was like I was dying. Now it's like being, ke almost like these children, like being kept on the brink of survival. Yes. Like. It's like. We it get just, to touch the reptile. It just won't kill me. No. Maybe. We get that one, 
that one little waft every now and then, a little poof. Like it makes my, like I, it, I feel it on my sweat. Like where it's like, oh. God, yeah, so good. Yeah, it feels good, right? It feels so good. <laughs> so at this point, there were still Skype visits with extended family. That's leaking, and it's very cold. Oh, Sorry. You put the whole bag on. Sorry, no, we, we have, have a bag, bag of ice. We have a bag of ice, and I was going to put it on my legs. And the... Well, because it's a Ziploc. Not zipped well. It's not locked or <laughs> zipped. Um, and so Sister Teresa commented that the kids looked small. And then Louise would just say, oh, they're just going to be tall and lanky like David. So sister, you know, bought that. She said she didn't really see signs of malnourishment, but their clothes yeah. were kind of baggy. So it was kind of Well, and I think kids at that age in general, like they're kind of in this weird, I mean, not to compare to dogs, but like when you have a dog and they're in that weird. Like, and, things like, are growing at different rates. Their and, legs are too long and their butts are too big. And yeah, yeah. it's like nothing you fits together. Your teeth quite, yeah, yeah, so like I could see an outside person like not questioning that. Yeah. Uh, but then Louise decides to cut off visual contact and just talk to her siblings on the phone. And then the kids were homeschooled, so that eliminates opportunity for like school staff or mm -hmm. somebody else, you know, a school bus driver to be able to detect signs of abuse and neglect. Yeah. So really the kids are cut off from the world. From like gatekeepers yeah. out there to try to help. They don't get to watch TV. They don't get compare anything like that to be able to, yeah, compare. Well, that's often like the first time you realize like, oh, this is how other people live. It's when you go to someone else's house for like a play date. And you're like, oh, both your mom and dad? Like, they get along? Okay. It's like, oh, you have cable? Hmm. Hmm. Or you're like, wait, you don't get to watch the Simpsons? My mom said we didn't here? get cable in our neighborhood. Liar. You Lies. live in California. Lies. <laughs> Mother, you lied. <laughs> Before moving to California, David and Louise lived in Texas. And by the year 2000, cruelty and neglect was was starting up there and starting to escalate. Their neighbors said other kids didn't want to play with the Turpin kids because they said they smelled bad and wore <sighs> weird clothes and had weird haircuts. Being the smelly kids are always the worst. I've had days at school in full transparency where you forget your deodorant and then you're that kid. The smelly kid. Well, and look, they did the boys' haircuts just like David. I mean, that's uh, just... Like the 80s. That's, that's like 70s. That's like a, yeah, like you have well, to... Well, it's like a, a long bowl. A 70s bowl cut that looks like your dad. I, okay, to be fair, I think my dad did my bowl cut, but... <laughs> My dad loved me. <laughs> Both of my sons had the same fucked up haircut <laughs> at one point in their life when I couldn't figure out what to do, and it was the bowl and the long. I'm so sorry, kids. I'm sorry. Public apology. Right? It was. It's that haircut that we saw on FDR. It's a haircut now we're seeing on David Turpin. Mm -hmm. It's a haircut we might be seeing on you. But you have the world's largest bear claw in the back, so you can't really tell the, the back. What, this big clip? Yes, that giant bear claw. It's, it's a good, like... No, it's handy as it's, hell. It's, I wish... My neck is very sweaty right now. I wish I had a bear claw. I didn't know they're called bear claws, are they? Yes. What do you call it? A clip? Ah, Macy. Is Sorry. that a California It's a specialized thing? kind of clip. There's alligator clips. What? The, oh wait, are those the snappy ones? Yeah, the ones that you use like if you're coloring your hair. And that in the day you could use as a roach smoker, also, but also can use for your hair. <clears throat> I don't do drugs. I don't either. But when I was in high school, I did the drugs. Okay, but did you actually use a hair clip like that? I have used one of those. It's the point to They're little not burn little your metal hair. ones. Yeah. You oh. Can, you can, okay. Okay. I was like suck, a big you can suck that root <laughs> into the wall. The whole thing. I had like the big giant ones were dying in your hair, so I was a mashing. 
No, and so you can really just get in there. And they're metal. No right? waste. Those little metal yeah, ones. Yeah. Okay. It allows the no wasting of the Roche. That's learn, cool. Learn life skills here at Deeply Disturbing Things That's from right. two professional counselors. <laughs> um, I'm lost here. This is for entertainment purposes only. It's our fun. Let us be. Let us be. We're sweaty. We may have minor heat stroke right now. We do this every year. We die of heat stroke in the attic. And we, we don't learn. <laughs> okay, so the kids, neighborhood kids, are rejecting the turpins because of their weird haircuts. Um, at one point, one of the children had run away when they were living in Texas. But because he was so severely malnourished and neglected, well, he, couldn't he wasn't. Get far. He, no, he wasn't able to communicate like the direness of the situation of the police, oh. and so the police just took him home. Ah. Oh. Fuck you. Yeah. Oh, fuck you. I'd be so mad. <laughs> like, and so, I mean, that maybe played into why so nobody really tried it again. It's like, oh, well, it's not going to work. It's like, learn helplessness. Yeah, well, and it's kind of like, the, well, maybe what they're doing to me isn't wrong. If the police don't do anything, then maybe right. it's not wrong. Right. No, good point. Because they never learned anything different. Yeah, good point. <sighs> Stupid. Stupid police. In that <laughs> moment, that one moment, you did bad. Should have asked more questions. Should have asked more. And at least, like... Like, when you take the kid home, like, look, you know, do a looky loo Or, like, a medical eval, perhaps, from a professional. Yeah, good idea. Yeah. Or just I call be, CPS just because. Should I be a police officer? <laughs> Let's put a pin in that. A safety pin, a bobby pin, or a, is there another a kind push of pin? pin? A push pin. A hat pin. Let's put a hat pin in it. In 2010, now they're in California, my ears are sweaty. <laughs> Louise gave birth to her 13th child. And so she, you know, people would ask, I, how many kids are you going to have? Are you going to keep having some kids? 25. Like, 25. Yeah, that's what you say. I, I'll have 20. I'll have 25 as long as God keeps giving them As to long me. as that sperm keep hitting, I keep pregnating. Pregnating. That's right. Um, so even though several of the children were adults, they were rarely allowed out of the house. Like I said, often chained to their beds, <laughs> fed once a day. Once a day. And probably not a lot either. And probably not like, wow. I mean, they weren't getting the pie, so who knows what they're getting. Probably peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. They're those bathed are, once a year. Bad. They had no communication pretty much with the outside world. One of the boys, I think the old oldest boy, was allowed to take a community college class for a time, but mom took him there. Waited outside the classroom the whole time and then took him right home after. So there was no opportunity for him to socialize or have any time. Again, she's trying to supervise the time mm -hmm. with the yeah, yeah. No time to talk to the teacher or anything like that. So the state took custody of the children. I know it's so hard. All the children were very severely malnourished, mentally underdeveloped. I mean, they just hadn't been given any stimulation or education. The oldest Turpin child was 29 and only weighed 82 pounds. 29? Yeah. 82 pounds? Yeah. That's like the size of my thigh. Yeah, no, they were all tiny. And Poor thing, Oh. The 17 year old. 29, too. Had that, the IQ that has of to, a first grader. That has to mess up like your whole development, like your brain, your body, like everything. 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 Yeah. So, not getting stimulation, not getting education, not getting enough food, being abused. I mean, it's like all, all these terrible things. So the kids did receive extensive medical and psychological treatment. They got to stay for extended stays in the hospital. They had like these teams come in and really do amazing work with them. And I remember when it was 
first coming out in the news, like the kids were so excited to be able to like watch a Disney film, watch a Harry mm -hmm. Potter film. Like they've never got to see culture. Yeah, just what it, being a kid means. Yeah. And so they're just so excited about those things. There was just always basic needs, basic needs. If that, if that. Mm -hmm. So the county district attorney said, this is among the worst, most aggravated child abuse cases that I've ever seen or been involved in in my career as a prosecutor. So what about David and Louise Turpin? They were charged with 12 counts of torture 12 counts of false imprisonment, seven counts of abuse of a dependent adult, and six counts of child abuse. And then David received an additional charge of a lewd act on a child under 14. I could not find any details about what WTF. It was. Wow. Yeah, I don't know what that was. Somebody reported something inappropriate. But an additional line was crossed by Creepo David Turpin. David was also charged with perjury in relation to false documents he had filed with the California Department of Education because he said that the kids were being educated in a private school. So they both got life imprisonment with a possibility of parole after 25 years. I learned something in my topic that, um, oh gosh, I'm not going to be able to remember the year, but after a certain year, like you have to at least serve 85, I think, percent of your sentence before like good behavior or whatever will be taken into account before you can like leave early. But prior to that point, um, it could be shortened even more extensively. Okay. Well, I mean, if they get out, I think that's gonna have a big impact on the kids. Oh yeah, could you imagine? I would I would move like to another different a country a different country because they're not gonna be able to like travel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like I would just move out by peace. Yeah. So the kids are focusing on recovery and looking forward. They got a lot of donations, um, about half a million dollars that helped pay for medical and dental care, but that doesn't go far. With I was about to say you kids. said half a million, and that's mm, yeah, thirteen kids. It's like a kids, couple so thousand yeah. across everybody. So that was did assist with dental care, medical care, educational assistance, so getting some tutors in, just trying to make up oh, for those gaps yeah. and other needed services. Um, they had received very little education, as I mentioned. And they were very excited to learn about the world, to learn to ride a bike, Aww. to swim, to yeah. learn to cook. I mean, they just had it. I feel like I need all these things. Received anything. I just just chained to a bed and made to lay in your own fist and shit. Like, that's just horrible. So the DA, he said, I was very taken by them, by their optimism, by their hope for the future. They have a zest for life and huge smiles. Could you imagine they were so hopeless for so long? I mean. And then to finally get rescued. Yeah, they didn't know they were going to get out of it. No. They probably had given up. I mean, that was, this kid, 29? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just wonder if that daughter hadn't escaped and called the police, what would have happened? Anyone? Someone would have died for sure. I mean, would they have just kept them there their whole lives? Probably. It's just so sad. I'm going to fix this window right here. Sorry for my squeaky chair. What's wrong with the window? Nothing. It's getting darker. Keep going. Oh. Um, yeah, so they're looking forward. They're working on school, working on their health, learning basic life skills. I mean, you have to learn everything. How to ride a bus. How to... Everything. How to shop, how to, you know, have a bank account. I mean, everything. So the um, kids don't want their identity to people who they meet to be one of being a victim. And because that means they have to relive their trauma every time they meet somebody. They want people to know them for who they are and what they're going to be doing, which I really like that attitude from the kids. It's cool, you can just 
shine that sunlight right in my face. You look good. That looks good. <laughs> because that's a good point. If people see you that's not good. as you are this person that endured that thing, like you do have to relive that trauma every time somebody brings it up again. Me too. You know, if that's the lens they see you through, it's like, oh, that you poor thing. Mm -hmm. Like, like oh, and yeah. you're like, like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry you went through. How about the strength and the resiliency? Yeah. How about you just focus on like, wow, you're at this point, great job. Yeah, and that's what they said they want. They want people to know them for what they're going to be doing and who they are now. Well, because why would so you want to... focusing on that victim. Yeah, past. and that whole identity is controlled by their parents. The last thing they want is that to carry through. I mean, let me be my own person, right. finally. Right, because that's the true escape yeah. from the House of Horrors. Ooh, nice ending. I like that. I that, that was just so good. Um, that's all. I don't know where to put my laptop. I'm a can in, and I'm excited for my topic. Oh, I am hot and sweaty. Yes. So I am going to talk about psychological profiling of serial killers. Oh. I know. So there's. we'll talk about a couple serial killers at the end specifically and kind of talk about how they would be classified. Um, and I have a couple audio clips of them just to give a little, little exciting. Substance. I know. All right. So, so okay. keep in mind that like this is going to be a little overarching, but the goal being that like we can learn a little bit more about um, the psychological part and the mental health part that goes behind all of this. Because a lot of the interviews I watched for um, serial killers, you hear the police say, like, people say like, "What was the motivation? What was the motivation? Just murder." They just wanted to kill people. And like you hear the police say that over and over again. And and I do think that from the research I found, like there is I mean, yes, murder's part of it, but there's more there for right. us to understand. Yeah, so it's gotta be some something more. Or it's yeah, just... yeah. And not to like normalize anything in in it like it's okay away, not by any means. But um, to help us understand a little bit more psychologically what can lead up to that dog. Almost to just like normalize the fact that these people do exist and certain circumstances and traumas can make things more likely for somebody. Um, you know, not necessarily that this evil person was put on the earth randomly and they just did this. Um, you know, that's there's human nature behind this as well. Yes, drives. So a serial killer is a person who murders three or more people over a period of more than 30 days. Uh, there has to be a cooling off period between the murders and whose motivation for killing is largely based on some sort of psychological gratification. Um, if And that kind of helps distinguish it from like a mass murder. Where somebody, right, or yeah, somebody who's yeah. in a psychotic episode and not thinking about yes. things. So often there's a sexual element involved with killings. The murders may have been attempted or completed in a similar fashion, and the victims may have had something in common, for example, like hair color, um, sex, age, um, occupation, appearance. So there's often a way that they're kind of classified as well. It can really throw investigators off if there isn't that. Yes. Like yes. with the Night Stalker, yes. it was all over the place, and it was really difficult mm -hmm. to really um, determine that it was actually one person. I watched, side note, I watched his interview, the Night Stalker, and um, it was really interesting because he was willing to talk about it as like that we statement or like people who experience trauma might do this or that. But when they'd say, so is that why you blah, 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 he would say, I declined to answer that question. It made me think of I feel statements in counseling. <laughs> <laughs> how like when somebody's avoiding accountability, we say like, okay, well, like, let's talk about how that, how that's your thing right. versus generalizing. But so totally he, a night, he was night not stalker. doing I statements. No, no, not adhering to the Adlerian principle. <sighs> 
I know it's hot. It's hotter when you drink more. So keep going. Um, I barely have any left though. I'm trying to save the last have, little bit. I'm already you, down to the. You blue. weren't even drinking during your topic. It evaporated. It did. Not it's so evaporate. hot in here. It did not. Evaporate. Aliens. You're gonna have to get more because I'm almost. Elijah. Too. Why don't you go the get? Jews know what I'm talking about. That's a Jew thing. Okay, I'm glad you reached out to your people. Can you go grab more while I just describe? I don't have more. Are we out? I Are mean, you slacking? You brought two I have cans? an opened bottle of red wine. That think. sounds very okay. fine. Okay. 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 Go. BRB. BRB. Okay. So some of the characteristics um, might be, and, and keep in mind this is research based from what we know about serial killers. Uh, but don't, you know, think that it's everybody. Uh, we don't want to overgeneralize. However, most serial killers are single white males. Uh, they tend to be intelligent, often have employment difficulties, especially when dealing with authority, unstable family histories. They're often abandoned by their fathers and raised by their mothers. Hi, that was so I'm fast. back. Hey, so I was Hi. just sharing. Single white males intelligent with employment difficulties. We're not generalizing, but this is what stats have told us. Well, that's what profiling is. Yeah, that's just... exactly. We need to know. You're, you're in charge. Oh. Um, <laughs> often there's an unstable family history. Oh, this is what I was going to tell you. They're often abandoned by their fathers and raised by their mothers, which is like an interesting link psychologically if we, if we go no, Freudian. always blame the mothers. If we go Freudian with this. Um, the frigid, cold mother is always being blamed. There's often criminal and psychiatrical and or alcoholic uh, histories, which if we think about like conduct disorder, um, like there's legal problems that tend to start from that. Like it's kind of that escalation. And then if it moves mm -hmm. into adulthood, there's higher risk of potentially something like antisocial personality disorder Yes, as it goes on or some sort of personality disorder. Uh, abuse histories. Uh, history rate of suicide attempts, interested in voyeurism, fetishism, um, sadomac sadomasochistic pornography. Um, many have reported histories of bedwetting as children and up into like older than bedwetting should occur. Well, you always hear about that trifecta. With trauma. Bedwetting, fire setting, cruelty to animals is yep. like. Yep. You're Fascination with fire is my next one. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then last one, sadistic activity, torturing animals. See, that's the trifecta. Those are the things. It so, it's not deterministic. If you have those three, don't worry. You don't have to become a serial. Again, like this is, this what, is three, all six, stats. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. These are twelve things that they've seen, like overarching, whatever. Okay. So, types of serial killers. This is the part that I kind of find interesting because I think most people focus on like organized type which is above average intelligence, very, um, you know, they're very uh, strategic. They Those are stereotypes you see in, in movies, movies a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. They lure victims in. They can evade detection. They control the crime scenes. Yeah, they, they um, even will follow the crime in the media. Um, and they're usually socially adequate. Like, they get along socially just fine, if not better than most. Or they're the quiet... He okay. just went to work. You, just, you know, yeah. like Robert Yates here in so, town. And that's a little bit more. So there's also the disorganized type. Again, there can be crossover here. But this one is more marked with low intelligence in the sense compared to maybe the above average intelligence of the other side. Um, impulsivity. They murder when the opportunity arises. So this isn't a mass murder. This isn't, I'm so angry at you that I'm going to murder you in the moment because I had no control over myself. It's like you're driving down the alley and you happen to see a person. And yeah, like, they just happen to be there versus luring somebody into a situation. Or sticking out, maybe. Exactly, exactly. Um, and they rarely dispose of the body for these folks. They usually leave the body where it was. Um, and they tend to be more introverted as people versus the uh, more organized type that tend to be very like the charismatic. So that's like the Dexter type. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. 
So let's talk a little bit about the prevalence of serial killers first of all. So there's approximately 400 serial killers in the U.S. in the past century, with anywhere from 2,526 to 3,860 victims. It's a lot of people. But there's some that have never been caught. And bodies have never Some been found. That have never been caught, even like missing persons that have just never mm -hmm. been indigenous women, yes, all those different that's things. What I was actually um, thinking about. Yeah. So I think that these are um, obviously low numbers, like most stats. We only know what is reported. Yeah, I think it's probably underreported. Absolutely. These are um, the ones that have gotten caught. Yeah, again, and with like um, sex workers. Like, they're not, I mean, it's going to be chopped up to drugs or chopped up to violence. Or nobody even reports them missing at all. all. Yeah, So exactly. if the bodies are hidden away forever or disappeared no in some knows. way, nobody would ever know. Mm -hmm. If they've cut ties with family, no one even reports it. Yeah, exactly. So 500 to 300 serial killers. So, again, this is where, like, okay, stats help us only so far. 50 to 300. That's a big fucking difference. That's a big all. difference. So that's how many they would assume are active at any point in time. That's a lot of serial killers active at this moment. I'm just like looking at the apartment back You're there. Like, like, <laughs> over there. Who lives over there? Well, and I think, it, I think we get such in our heads like it's these bad evil people and they're so far away from me. But just think that there's it like... It could be anybody. Yeah. It could be anybody. You don't know your neighbors, really. And the, I mean, the more you know them, sometimes they work their way into your life to know you better. And that's not a good thing. So who knows? That's true. You don't know. So serial murders have increased over the past 30 years. We have seen an upward trend with them, even though they're most talked about in the 70s during that kind of era. But they've still been on the incline. Over 80% or 80 percent of the 400 of the past century have emerged since 1950. Wow. Does it say why? It's um, on the rise? Um, it could be better detective work. It could be better reporting. It could be better follow through from police investigations. It could be knowing better profiling. I mean, I think there's so many different factors that could play a role in, in those numbers. Um, motives. So I wanted to break down actual motives because, again, I kept watching these videos and it was like, they're just bloodthirsty. Um, one I will talk about is actually bloodthirsty, but I wanted to know more. And diving into, like, the forensic psychology side of this uh, was actually really helpful. So there's the visionary motive type. Insane or psychotic is how they classify it in this kind of police classification world. Compelled to murder by entities such as the devil or God. Okay. All right. So you can see maybe some like cultish folks. Perhaps, yeah. Kind of I mean, falling in this. Would that fall under delusional at all? Or I mean, no, they're not considered. It's, it's almost like delusional disorder. It's not. It's it's more if you would think more like narcissist. Personality disorder maybe merge with an antisocial, where it's like the grandiosity. Um, it doesn't necess necessarily mean that they um, they could have a psychotic disorder, but they actually try to like if someone has a specific psychotic disorder, they do try to pull them off into a different category. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes it's hard to tell. Um, one of the ones we'll talk about was kind of hard to tell because it was inconsistent. So there's also mission oriented. So this is no psychosis at all type sounding stuff, no delusional sounding stuff. They believe what they need to be uh, need to rid in the world mm -hmm. of what they consider immoral or untrustworthy or unworthy. The victims are often prostitutes, young women, gay men, etc. Like I'm serving a mission. Sometimes to, those though to do don't that. they actually turn out to be gay themselves? Sometimes. As far as the ones for like uh, gay men, yeah. I mean, they would wouldn't admit it openly, probably, but I would assume so. Some repress something. Um, just in the fact of like not knowing how to socially appropriately have an outlet for that doesn't go with narcissism and social culture for men at all. 
Right. Um, okay, and then we have the hedonistic. So this is like deriving pleasure from killing. So subtype, there's subtypes, lust, thrill, and comfort. So are we going to get into necrophilia with the comfort? I mean, a little bit. We're going to dive. I would say that each of these could probably have their own like dive, but we're going to like touch base with all of them. Necrophilia is one, one of the things I have trouble relating to. There, I would hope so. <laughs> okay. So there's also the power control type where the objective is to gain power, control over the victim. Often these killers are abused as children. And is there probably like a torture element, like delaying, like you're not just killing, but maybe dragging it out and doing horrible torture things? In this one, it is mostly sexual power and control. So doesn't mean that sex can't be used as torture, sure. Um, but it's not necessarily torture outside of sex. Usually power and control tends to be aligned with sex related. Okay, got it. Okay, it got really dark in here. Do you think we can pull that open a little? Oh, I think I'm at your topic. No, I just, well, that too. <laughs> I just can't read my paper as well. I'm squinting. <laughs> this camera does really good at picking up light, but I can't read paper. Oh my God, I'm too blinded. Much. Too, too much. much. Too much. Too much. Maybe just turn on this light. Oh. I'm, ah, so bright. Okay, just that one. Oh, there we go. That's cool. All right. So then we have, there is a whole category which blew my mind, medical professionals. Oh, my God. This lighting is so much better than that right? bright sunlight. Thank God. Uh, medical professionals. Wait, as serial killers? As a whole category, as a whole motive. Oh, shit. So these kill. Remember how I talked about the doctor? Like, yeah. So these killers are often. Doctor Death. They're often referred to as angels of death. They're often involved in fraud of some sort. Hmm. Right? Okay, we're not done yet. There's still three more. I don't want to be killed by my doctor. So we're going to talk about the subtypes you mentioned. Okay. Lust, serial killer. This is where sex is the primary motive and fantasy plays a large role in this. So sexual gratification depends on the amount of torture and mutilation on the victims during this sexual whatever. They tend to use weapons that require close contact with the victim. Mm. Then we have the thrill killer. Primary goal is to inflict pain or create terror in the victim. The victims are often are strangers who the killer may have stalked for a period of time. These killers can go long periods of time without killing. Okay. Um, actually, the last person we're going to talk about um, would probably fall in this category, um, and you'll see why. All right. So, I mean, you just talked about, like, the close contact killing. I mean, that would be, like, strangling, stabbing, something yes. like that. Up close. Is there, like a, gun is like there a type that would be more likely to use a gun and shoot somebody? Mm. Um, the one that we'll talk about later, there was possibly some psychosis there. I think there was psychosis based on what I've read. Um, where it was almost like that was the quickest way to make that happen, but it wasn't necessarily like the psychosis itself was in other ways, but the killing was more of a way to make that happen. So it was quicker where you could see like the lust and the thrill It's the killing itself. They want to be close to that. Okay. Yeah. So comfort, which is for profit, there's material gain in an extravagant lifestyle, which are the primary motives. So these victims are usually family members, acquaintances, female serial killers are often this type. Mm. Mm -hmm. Which there aren't a lot of female serial killers. No, no, not that we know of. Maybe there's better at hiding them. Um, crafty then, bitches. Crafty bitches. We also have lust serial killers. Okay. Lust murder is the commission of a sexual killing and is a distinct subcategory of homicide. A homicide in which the offender searches for erotic satisfaction by killing someone. So the killing someone themselves is the erotic get satisfaction. Off on that. Yes. Commonly, this type of crime is manifested either by murder during sexual intercourse, so that's like 
while they're having sex, I'm murdering you. Uh, not me. And, <laughs> and or mutilation of sexual organs or of the victim's body in some way. Okay. Mutilation of the victims may include um, displacement or removal of genitalia. Like um, the one that would like, didn't they have like a whole belt made of nipples? Yeah. It was the one that yeah, I yeah, think yeah. Psycho was modeled Oh, yeah, 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 mm -hmm. Did he also have like some vaginas? Mm-hmm. Like just. Around. Loose. Some loose vaginas. Yeah. Like wizard sleeves? I don't remember how I stored them. I remember the nipples were on a belt, but I don't remember the storage of the vaginas. But I think that's who. Probably in that category, yeah. Psycho, the psycho movie mm -hmm. person was modeled after that person. Then we have the fantasy system of lust serial killers. Again, there's even more. Common themes found within these fantasies is power, domination, molestation, revenge, as well as the desire to degrade and humiliate others. Mm. Lust murders transform their fantasies into a predatory criminal behavior. Each time the paraphilic fantasy is acted upon, it increases the level of sadistic deviance and sexual violence required in order to for the offender to reach an orgasm. So these folks, like that fantasy starts maybe here and it builds. So like you do this with somebody and then it's no longer good enough. And then it's this mm -hmm. and it builds. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about lust serial killers in early childhood. Because okay. we've been able to note from research some different things with this. So um, there is kind of this notation in research of a lost childhood. Uh, one research study indicated that traumatic pre-adolescent events and lack of structure and support in the home environment fueled sexualized fantasies. Research also specifically indicates that sexual murders are created within early childhood development, particularly before the age of five years old. Mm. So there, you got to imagine that's some pretty significant trauma in someone's life. So, all right, go ahead. You were going to say something. Um, I'm just wondering if you've ever worked with a killer. I have. Once. Actually, yeah, once. I worked with somebody that, as a teen, that I saw all the danger signs, and then two years later, actually, they did try to kill somebody. Is that the one I know? I don't know. That I worked with? No. No? Okay. No. No. Yeah, it was probably before that. Okay. Um, and it was just very interesting, I mean, from an academic standpoint, to have clearly seen all these signs. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, two years later, yep, they're arrested for attempted murder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know the the one person, young adult, who acted in a lot of these antisocial ways and then ended up getting in legal trouble for actually um, mutilating somebody. Mm -hmm. They survived, luckily. Um, but then that later I worked with an adult who uh, murdered somebody as part of... Uh, Kind of almost like a initiation mm, process yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah, and then he served um, 30 years in prison. I worked with him right after he got out. Yeah, yeah it was really fascinating. Huge trauma, huge trauma mm -hmm. stuff. We did a lot of mindfulness. Yeah. We really did on reactions to not becoming instantly angry and like blacking out. Yeah. yeah. The team that I worked with, I think it was, I mean, I didn't get to work with them very long because they got pulled out of treatment with me when I started raising all these alarms. What? Do you want me? <laughs> okay, all right. Sorry. Pusher. <laughs> but there was, um, I think, some delusional disorder, psychosis, something mm -hmm. going on with mm -hmm. that individual. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about some of the killings. Like, what does this look like? Skyfall Red Blend. It's a little like, almost, I don't want to say musky, smoky, like a little smoky flavor. Paul brought this over the other day. It's, it's good. It's the leftovers. It's very good. Thank you, Paul. Yes. All right, so the killings. 
Mutilation typically takes place post mortem. Overall, <laughs> just hit me. I'm hot, and this is like we're in a close quarters. I'm yeah. losing control of my arms. That's okay. So mutilation of the bodies tends to happen after the person's already been dead. It's common for the genitalia to be stabbed or slashed with a sharp instrument. Which again, if we go to like, because we keep saying trauma, trauma, um, but I gotta say, do you taste smoky? It's very smoky. Smokiness, right? Um, not genitalia like a, slashing. You're coming in at a weird point. No, no, sorry. Just the wine taste is very different from the wine we're just drinking. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So the lust murderer, usually after killing, tortures, cuts, maims, or slashes the victim in regions on or about the genitalia, rectum, breath, and breasts in females. So, I mean, to me, this, like, reads as sexual trauma as a child, like, as a young child. And anger towards a lot sexual of parts. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I... I which I think, like, sexual abuse of, like, the worst kind of, like, family or, like, those close trusted, we talk attachment. Mm -hmm. um, none of the research actually specifically called that out, but it, it's pretty vague on the front end. Um, but I, I don't know. That's what I would, I would red flag it right away. Of like, hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's some kind of deep psychological Sex, yeah. connection there with yeah. genitalia and anger, violence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Vengeance. Mm -hmm. um, it's common for the offender to gnaw on or bite off the victim's breasts. Ooh. Right? Buttocks, neck, abdomen, thighs, genitalia as well. Because these body parts are a potent sexual connotation for the murder. Well, and if you want to take it Freudian, the breasts, I mean, that's mom, the mother. Mm -hmm. Which uh, we talked about, like, father... Issues with father often raised by mother, so there's probably a lot of family based because there there can be that like I'm stepping into that father role, but with a lot of anger and resentment against mom who allowed things to happen um, mm. in younger childhood. So a lot of things. I've a seen lot. a lot where there was legitimate abuse by the mom, but then there's cases yeah. where. Mom was completely unaware. You can't identify anything. And then I'm like, well, did they just not uncover things? Well, and or I've, was there really not anything? Were they well, really? I've seen a few things where, like, mom was, like, very enabling. Like, the, the abuser took on the dad's role of being more abusive and became more abusive towards mom. Um, but within a line because she's still mom and then like, you know, that line can get theoretically crossed in these scenarios So the, for the ones where there's really no childhood trauma identified Do you think that there really is no childhood trauma or just none was uncovered? I mean, I would say like barring psychosis or some other mental health diagnosis. Right, with no psychosis. I mean, I don't see it, honestly. Because I've with read of some cases, and it's just like, I know. I, I wonder. I doubt. I, honestly, when the, I read the ones where it's like, I had a normal childhood upbringing. Everything yeah, was yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. But like these people are literally artists in manufacturing what their life looks like. So... Pardon me for not believing it. So what would be the motivation behind saying that they had a normal childhood? It's just part of the persona. It's what they've been like. I'm, like everything's fine. Every, like I'm charismatic. There's nothing yes, wrong I'm with perfect. me. Oh, yes. Um, that yes. godliness. Yes. So that's what I would chalk it up to. Um, everything's fine. I mean, if someone had healthy attachments no throughout their life, then I would say there would have to be some sort of psychosis or some sort of something. It doesn't just happen. Like, and that's, I've, I've never read a scenario where it's like, huh, this doesn't make sense at all. There's always like a, hmm, well, this doesn't make sense. Like, mm -hmm. something's missing. Those cases have always perplexed me. Yes, yes. Because we want something. to know the why. We want but, to know, like, okay, well, this happened, and so this I just why. think, like, if you dig deep enough, you'll find one thing, one thread that 
I goes, want to know the ideology, it, damn it. It goes against the grain. So they're saying this, but there's like this one thing that someone said once, and it's like, wait, that doesn't match. And that's all it takes. So, you know, keep your curious hat on. We don't always know. I have my curious hat on right now. So I tell counseling students, like, take your judgmental hat off, put your curious hat on. Here we go. Here we go. All right. So, again, moving on. The act of killing is seen as an integral part of sexual excitement. Again, we're just going in the killings part here. The method of the killing the victim, these methods usually include strangulation or blunt force or stabbing with a sharp instrument. It is uncommon for the offender to rely on a firearm. Now I'm gonna talk about a firearm person here at the end because I think it's, it, it's a good contrast. Um, because often that takes away sexual gratification. Like, they're just instantly dead, right? Right, right. So it's actually counterintuitive to most of the lust and fantasy aspects of um, serial killers. The most common... Is that most, mostly seen in military, the like use of a firearm? Like, ex-military or military? Some have. I've read that. Where, um, But often, it, almost like, the mil like while they're in the military, it'll be, like, one time. Or like something happened once, and then they were out of the military, and then it happened further. So our Yates guy, I mean, that was yeah. his MO. He was a yeah. military guy, and he killed by shooting people. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if, because I think if you're in a but he may not strong, be a, he may not be a lust sexual fantasy no. serial killer. No, but what I was thinking mm -hmm. is if you're in a strong gun culture like the military, like the gun is almost experienced as an extension of the body, an Ooh, appendage, the, if you will. Of the penis, and ma Yeah, maybe a penile instrument of um, weaponry and killing. That makes sense, too, especially with, I know Yates was around this area, and we are right next, I mean, very red state, very gun pro, mm -hmm. like, this is my right, this is my manlyhood. Mm -hmm. This is my penile. Yes, yes. Maybe, yeah. I don't know, maybe. Some psychological research there. You want to go interview some serial killers with me? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Okay, all right. We're a little steamy in here. All right, so it is uncommon. Just kidding. Read that. The common, most sadistic act. There's a lot of. Stop looking in the drawers. I'm sorry. It's I'm very just... distracting for me. Squirrel. Stop it. <laughs> She's looking in the baby drawer. Well, because I was like, oh, those are swim diapers from last year. I, I wonder saw if they still fit. I saw your eyes lock I know, I was on like, the, what size are they? Lock on the door. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it Put it back. No, I'm we only got. I'm leaving them out. We only got two minutes for our bits, so stop being funny. Um, okay. <laughs> the most common statistic act committed by the offender includes burning breasts, Electrocution and body dismemberment. Ooh. I read a lot about body dismemberment. Okay, today. that's another piece I don't relate to. Good. Because it just Good seems job. so brutal, vulgar, and like, like bloody and messy and like hacking. And I can't even cut chicken. I mean, I'm okay with cutting chicken. Like the bone? I don't mind. Uh, see, I worked I at KFC. I could pop oh, that bone yeah. the right I, way. Like, yeah, oh. you're, you're a pro with the bone. Yeah. yeah. I just, like, the thought of that is just, are you, just so messy. Are you ready to learn the scale of criminal acts? Like, how do you know a one from a, I think the top is 22? Yes, for let's level, do it. Levels. Okay, so a number one, the lightest category here, is those who kill in self-defense and don't show psychopathic tendencies. Is this related to... Um, These are criminal acts. Dr. Stone's scaling of the most evil? It's related, yes. yes okay, yes, yes, I yes, watched yes. that documentary when okay, it came okay. out. That Perfect. was fucking fascinating. Number two are jealous lovers who, through egocentric or immature, um, may kill but not psychopathic again. So we have self-defense and then love passion. It's interesting to me that like love passion is number two, like the lower end. I mean, that makes sense. It's personal. It's. I also like, I feel like, I don't know who made this list. It might've been a man. He might've felt good about that. I don't know. 
I mean, it seems like a love passion is going to be, it's not going to, I mean, why would that be a serial killer? Do you have three loves? These, these are criminal acts. Oh, okay. Not just serial okay. killer. So like, this, this seems is like why love passion would be why. like one time. Because the first one is self-defense. Obviously not a serial killer. Okay, got it. Okay, number three. Willing companions of killers, impulse ridden with antisocial traits. So this is the partners that are helping. Yes. So I'm gonna sidekicks. I'm gonna talk about a sidekick later who just got released from prison three years ago and is out and mm. about. All right. I always was, thought the sidekick thing is weird. And that's like a three, which it kind of makes sense now, like we're seeing that score and being like, why did they only get that much time? I never a sidekick ever. No. I, I go solo. Low you girl. have to. Don't trust anybody. I don't fucking trust anybody. I would trust you. I mean, if I got in a pinch and I was like, I can't pick up this body. I kind of feel fine. the same. Like, I would absolutely do it myself. But if I felt like I couldn't, <laughs> you would be the only person I'd call. All right. All right. I think that was our confession, babe. Um, number four. Killing in self-defense, but had an extremely, pro, uh, like, had a like a provocation, like a fight or something towards the victim, or like an issue. Like it wasn't just self defense, but like you called me a dick, and I was like, I'm gonna punch you until you die. Like maybe there's a pass to it. Yeah, yeah. So there's like a little more there. Um, number five are traumatized, desperate people who kill abusive relatives, genuinely remorseful. Remorseful. Mm hmm. So we're not quite burning bed then. No, this is like I've been traumatized. Like it's that person who was sexually abused through their childhood and then in their teenage years they shot their dad who abused them and they run out and they're like really sad about it. They didn't want to, but they were just like traumatically uh, driven. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Got it. Okay, number six. Um, impetus, hot-headed murderers, yet without marked psychopathic features. Hot-headed is key here. I know. You it's know what big. came to my mind is, what? remember I told the story of Lorena Bodovit, and she was oh, like. Oh, yeah. She, oh, yeah. Like, in the press Absolutely. was the hot-headed Latina that. She'd probably be a five on the scale, honestly. She didn't kill, though. She just no. robbed his. But say he died from fog. bleeding out. Say if that happened, she'd probably be a five on the scale of yeah. one to 22. But I thought that was maybe racist. Possibly. Actually, probably. Racist. Probably, most likely. Yeah, hot-headed Latina. I mean, that's okay. Sorry, that was six. Not that should be a six. <laughs> okay, number seven. That's so, stereotype. So here's where I feel like things get a little escalated. It's around a seven. Okay. This is where we get into highly narcissistic, um, not distinctly psychopathic, but have a psychotic core who will kill people close to them. <laughs> So it's like out of narcissism. Narcissism, sorry. So you feel justified. You feel justified. You have a reason. Yes. You are above them, mm -hmm. maybe above the law. Like maybe I, I for some reason, you like right. I imagine like business dealings, like those, uh, like the narcissist sociopaths who are in the top percentage of elite businessmen. Like don't like, get in my way, motherfucker. Yeah. yeah, and you do, and I feel justified. Got That's it. how Got I do that. Okay, so number eight. Non-psychopathic people with smoldering rage who kill when rage is ignited. So that that's per, that's that person who just sits and beats someone until they die. That person. Yeah. Okay, number nine, jealous lovers with psychotic features. So now we have gotten into psychopathic features, which means that there's some sort of delusional belief system happening. So it could be like we broke up. And they're, they still think that we're in love and everything's going to work out. And then they see me with someone else and then they just bludgeon the person mm -hmm. to death. Okay. So the key feature around that eight or a nine phase is psychopathy starts to come in. Um, okay. Here we go. Number 10, killers of people who were, quote, in the way. Mm. So inconvenient. Yeah. I mean, we're really getting we're into a disregard moving, of human yeah, life we're here now. Away. Yeah, like you, that's what I liked about like you actually aren't a the person. Skin. You are a pawn, and you're in my way. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you have to go. And number eleven are psychopathic killers who were in the way. So killing another killer. Mm -hmm. So say like is this vigilante justice? Like it could be like 
maybe maybe you did team up with somebody. Oh, and now you're like, and oh, now I don't trust them. Now they're them. a threat to me. I don't trust them, and then they kill them in order to advance their forward. cause. Because if you think about it, like killing a stranger, yeah, that's really disregard for human life. But killing someone that you created a bond with within this structure, yeah, okay. Number twelve: power hungry psychopaths who killed when they were cornered. So these are people that when like confronted just mur like were willing to murder people. Okay. Whoever they were. So you're in a corner. Yep. You Don't got put you killer got in a corner. Don't put killer in a corner. Number 13, psychopathic killers with inadequate rage filled personalities who quote snapped. So to me I'm thinking they've been holding that in for a long time. Yeah. They've wanted to kill for a long time, maybe keeping a secret. Mm -hmm. And that's probably why it's up at this level, because it could be anybody. Like, when you snap, it's, I think that word is pretty, I don't know. Well, we've had a fuck ton of mass killings this yes. year. Yes, I think And I would say a lot of them might fall into that category where yeah. there wasn't signs before. Again, and this and is just a criminal sudden, act, so it could totally be mass murder. They're going to their work and killing everybody. everybody. Yep, yeah. exactly. Um, number 14 is ruthless, ruthless, Ruth, damn you, Ruth, ruthlessly self-centered psychopathic schemers. So these are people who are, like, planning things. Damn you, Ruth. Tammy Ruth. Number 15, psychopathic cold-blooded spree or multiple multiple murders. Okay, so what would be an example of that? Um, this would be like planning in advance. Um, so the, the one before that is self-centered psychopathic schemer. So maybe it's like I'm trying to gain something. Like maybe you're a millionaire, which you're not. Don't worry. Don't go kill her. Um, she's a millionaire. Um, and you see where I live? And I, I no might trim I might plan ruthlessly to kill you for that, but it's very self-centered. The next one is cold-blooded, which means I'm just going to go on a spring of multiple murders. Spring? Spring? A spree. Spree. Spree makes it sound like it's fun. I know it's not fun. Like a shopping spree. I viewed it as like a spring, like, bam. I snapped a lot in this episode. I need to stop. It's bothering me. You're a loud snapper. Wow, listen to mine. Mine's very muted. That's good. Thanks. Can you do all? No, I could barely do one. Do you hear that weak snap? I would suck at it. If I can, you whistle. Here we go. I'm bad. Okay, my whistles is not strong, but it's stronger than yours. I have to plan. Okay, I have to like plan ahead and moisten my don't lips. Don't eat crackers and don't laugh. Exactly. Damn it. Okay. You sucked my strength in my whistle. <laughs> One, two, three. I can't now. I'm breaking the cardinal rule. I can't. I can't. You can't laugh and you can't crack her. Hot breath on me. That was pretty good. Wow. Okay, here we go. died quickly. All right. Unrelated. Here we go. I've always been jealous of people that can like do that. My dad does that. The really loud like and it's like ear piercing. My I dad just told me. You have to hold your loop. He told me to do with the piece of grass the like. You hold your loop. I just can't do it. Oh it all tickled. I hate it. Okay. All right. Here we go. I don't have to have all the skills. No. We fucking work hard enough. Okay. We work hard. Don't ask more of us. I'm just, not going to snap and I'm not going to whistle We loud. literally need you just to say that everything we're doing is okay and good enough. That is it. That's it. Okay, so you're good enough. You're good enough, too. Thank you. I needed that. Yeah, me too. All right. Number 16. Psychopath. Oh, just kidding. Number 17. Sexually perverse serial murders, torture murders, where rape is the primary motive with murder to hide evidence. So now 17 is when we get to the sexual piece ties in. Um, 
serial murder, so more than one, torture is involved, and rape is the primary motive. How do they know rape is the primary motive, though? Uh, because they've been raped. But it might just be an opportunistic thing in the but moment. But just think about it. This is the first time in this whole list that rape is involved. Okay. So because there's an additional element, it ranks higher in this list as being more severe. And because torture is usually involved torture, as well. Torture, okay, yeah. Again, torture like is burning bad. of the nipples and such. Um, and electricity. So number 18, torture murders with murder as the primary motive. So I'm going to torture you until you die. Is number 18. Torture is definitely really, really bad. Yeah, because like the other one, if you think about it, like it's sexually perverse. Um, and I'm going to torture you. And either that happens post-mortem or before, but like murder itself isn't the actual motive. Um, it's actually the sex and torture, but the next one is actually torture to kill you. Ugh, that's yeah. so, so bad. Right? 19. I mean, that's sadistic. That's sadistic. Up. Yeah. Again, we're like 22 is the worst on this scale. Okay. So we're getting so close. We're getting to the yeah. real bad, bad. Stuff. 19 is a psychopath with driven to terrorism, subjugation, intimidation, and rape, just short of murder. murder. So this is like willing to sacrifice their own life, um, willing to do um, the absolute worst thing to kill somebody. Where torture and murders, it's not about them. Their life isn't involved, it's yours. Where these people, it doesn't matter. Whatever gets them to the objective. And 20, this is the, where the nightmares are just bad at this exactly, point. Exactly, exactly. 21, psychopaths preoccupied with torture in the extreme, but are not known to have commit, committed murder. So th this is different because, like, kind of like what you're talking about with the kids, just honestly, would I rather have been probably just killed quickly, easily, versus being tortured for 20 plus years of my life, never knowing if it's going to get better? If you would have asked one of the kids at the time, they might have said, just please end it. Just end it, yeah. yeah. So that's why this goes higher. It doesn't actually have to be murder. It's just that they're, I want to torture you. And, and I enjoy torture. You hear where victims are begging to just die, kill be me. killed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just please kill me. So this is that person that just, a, just a bad, bad place just to wants to torture to see the pain, not even the death, and that may be worse for some. For many. Yeah, and I, I think that's got to tie into power mm -hmm. and narcissism. And it's amazing and to even think that like there's something worse than death. There is. Yeah. Having no control and being no tortured. control, no hope, the worst pain you've ever experienced in your life. And I'm sure, like, if the killers, like, I've learned, I've read, like, at those type of killers, like, they learned, like, how to not be so severe because they kill their victims too quickly early on. Yeah. And so how to back off it so they stay alive. Yeah. I mean, exactly. That is so, calculated. so evil. So calculated. It's so evil. It's evil. Number 22. This is the top. Psychopathic torture murderers with torture who torture their primary is is the primary motive and sexual homicide. So they tor torture people, um, and that's the primary motive. They do kill them, and there is either sex during or post mortem. So it's kind of like everything combined at that element. Right? Yeah. So those are the scales of criminal acts. From 1 to 22. Um, so now we're going to talk a little bit about some specific people. Just three. Um, to give an example of what a profiler might look at for these people. So the first person is Jeffrey Dahmer. I'm starting with him because I think he's a well-known name um, in this realm. Uh, he was American nationality. He had 17 victims. His reign of terror was from 1978 to 1991. Uh, his motives were necroph and this is per the actual um, forensic psychologist, necrophilia and cannibalism. Favored method of killing was actually drugging and then strangulation. 
He was sentenced to So that's him. very intimate. Very intimate. Strangulation. You're in, you're and here directly we go. connected to them losing their he life. He was sentenced to 937 years in jail. Did Scale he... of evil is what they call it. 22. He was at the so top. So at the top. He was at the top. So before I go into... You hadn't even mentioned cannibalism before in some of those. And it's going to come up, yes. So um, That's another thing I can't relate to. Me neither. Necrophilia, <laughs> dismemberment, cannibalism. You mean like serial killer those. things. So I'm going to share just a couple little clips of audio from Jeffrey Dahmer to give you an idea. These were interviews by him. Is he still alive? What? Or did he get executed? Um, no, he died. I'm pretty sure actually Jeffrey Dahmer was killed in prison. Oh, killed by other prisoners? Yeah. So he wasn't executed or No, died. no, no. He was killed by another prisoner. So we're getting a little more mangled looking at the end of this podcast. Okay, here we go. Um, so I think I think they were cute. Oh, just kidding. Oh, this one. That might be the wine one. Okay. Wine goggles. I have to pay attention to the timer on this one. Okay, here we go. Ugh. Here's the first part. Okay, I'm gonna turn the volume up for you all. I know, I know, right? He was cuter looking when he was young, honestly. Okay, here we go. Just kidding, you can't hear that. Let me start that back a little bit. Do you think I would look good in Dahmer glasses? I'll answer that off camera. All right, here we go. I'm glasses shopping is why I ask. Okay, pause, because you can't hear that. Let me turn that back up. Oh, it is up all the way. And oh. they're actually, I mean, a couple years ago, at least, they were okay. kind of trendy. Okay, ready? Yes. Here we go. Oh, that's why I still can't. Okay, pause. Pause. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, just be quiet. Doing what I did was my way of feeling in, in complete control, at least for that situation. Creating my own little world where I had the final say, where I could completely control a person, a person that I found physically attractive, and uh, keep them with me as long as possible, even if it meant just keeping them. Mm. So there's one part. So you hear the control, like I'm gonna keep you with me, even if it's just a part of you. Did he keep like souvenirs or trophies? Is that what he's talking about? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And then here, let's talk a little bit more with Who's Jeffrey this? Dahmer. Oh, same, same Jeffrey Dahmer. Dahmer. Same I, glasses. Same glasses. That's like way earlier in life. Okay, ready? Here we go. Here we go. Paul, what would you do with a with a dead animal, Jeff? Take them back in the woods, uh, skin them sometimes, uh, slit them, slit them all the way open, uh, look at the organs, feel them. Can you describe what no, you were thinking? I was, I was, it was just mystifying to me how, how the insides of the animal looked. Um, it was a sort of ex uh, a general excitement for me. I don't know why. Uh, it, was a, it was exciting to see. I get that. And what I what I find interesting about this is like he's talking about human experience right there. Like he doesn't understand why, but he gets intensity and drive yeah. from that experience. I mean, I I get that. I mean, if other parts of his life were unfulfilling, mm -hmm. that you know, looking at the insides of a dead animal, like that is going to give. Anybody, something I well, would think, and if it's go, not usual. We yeah, see yeah, the yeah, outsides. Yeah. And if it, you're right on track there too, like if you go brain science wise, what we know about dopamine and serotonin, like novel experiences. Yeah. When you've been traumatized, your dopamine and serotonin like get depleted, and it's yep. harder to produce it. So you need more novel experiences at a higher extreme level. Yep, and then we're building those neural pathways that are related, unfortunately, to death. Yes. And then that it began, becomes this leveling up almost of needing things to be more and more extreme, which is why, like, with these folks, you tend to see, like, harming animals being first before they experiment with humans because mm -hmm. it is it's a leveling accessible. up. It's accessible. You can get away with it's, it. It's not like, oh, I want to harm a person really bad. It's about filling that need that they're feeling and it starts small and then needs to get bigger per their drive. Mm -hmm. And same with fires. Yep. See, yeah, it's exactly. danger, it's excitement, it's power, it's control. All right, here's the last one for Dahmer. The procedure that you utilized was to drill holes through the bone, through the skull area. What did you inject into the holes? 
So I'm going to pause real quick um, just to say this out loud. I didn't know this about Jeffrey Dahmer. He drilled holes in the heads of his victims prior to being dead to kind of put them in a, like a sedative type state um, to have more control where they were less likely to object. So that's yeah. what he's talking about in court right here. Here we go. Uh, he put hot water acid in the hole. What sort of acid? I for it. Now, what was the purpose of that drilling technique to uh, put the person in a sort of zombie like state? I didn't know exactly what I'm doing, but I was. So they're alive but malleable. Zombies. What do you mean when you say a zombie like state? What do you say to our language about? Are you willing to just follow my orders and uh, not want to leave? This is probably extreme brain damage. Right? So he's literally doing a lobotomy on somebody yeah. and putting in water or a hydrolauric uh, acid. Acid. Um, to make them like a zombie like state so they would do what he wanted them to. Wow. Wow. I didn't even know that about Jeffrey Dahmer. And I've heard a lot about Dahmer. So that was interesting to me to hear. Um, so. Before we dive into the next person, I want to just talk about Dahmer a little bit about what we know about him as far as like classifying. So he began dissecting animals as a child. He killed one man and then waited 10 years before he killed again. He was on probation for a year for exposing himself and masturbating publicly in front of two 12 year old boys, which red flag sexual trauma. Like, if you were a child counselor and you heard that, you would be like, yeah, yeah. okay, I'm going to watch for that. He spent a lot of time in gay bars, would strike up conversation with men, and then drug their drinks. He did not kill these men. He was experimenting. He killed his second victim after having sex with him at a hotel. Dahmer was intoxicated and didn't actually remember killing him. Dahmer was arrested and charged with sexual assault and enticing a minor for immoral purposes. He served a week in jail and five years probation. Mm. Dahmer would drug his victims, strangle them, and have sex with their bodies after postmortem, so as corpses. Dahmer kept the body parts of his victims as souvenirs and would mm. often cook and eat his victims. Dahmer began to use acid as a means of disposing of victi his victims' bodies. I watched the video of them pulling out. They found, like, a big vat of acid in his apartment. And everyone was just shocked in his neighborhood because he's not that type of guy. Like, they never assume that. And they're pulling out this big bin of acid um, that he actually used to dispose of people. He then used a refrigerator to preserve human meat, a freezer for human heads, a filing cabinet to store grotesque pictures and use posts, uh, sorry, pots to remove his victims. I mean, he's flesh. all in at this point. Like he's his whole life, flesh off bones. Yes. is becoming yes. organized around the killing. Exactly. One it's other all victim consuming now. did escape Dahmer's apartment. He was able to contact police, which actually led to Dahmer's capture. So the how did he get out? I don't, I, yeah, there's probably a deeper dive for Dahmer himself, but yeah. Um, he was convicted of murder and was men, uh, and, but, and he was also identified as mentally disordered um, in prison, so he's kept in a separate ward because of that, um, ultimately. So that's where we're going to end with Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer. Again, all of these people could have their own dive for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but just to give an idea, what profile? We're just talking about the profile. Organized or disorganized? I would say very organized. Very organized. Very. I mean, they had a filing cabinet. With the pictures in yeah. it. Like, everything had a specific It's very methodical. The bodies were never just left there and tapped after. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Okay, so... Is that the right answer? Is this a quiz? Yes. Does that make you feel better? Yes. Okay. I'm so a great grover. The next person is David Ray Parker. Have I, you heard of him? I didn't. I didn't know. Uh, Ray Parker, who wrote Ghostbusters? David Parker. Okay. Okay. His middle name is Ray. Sorry to drag you into this, Ray Parker. Another American. He had about 14 to 60 victims. A lot. This guy, like, I actually read about it. I was like, oh, my so God. So probably way more. Probably more. 
Um, that's why they went up to 60 because there's a lot that were not identified. 1950s to 1999. It's a big span of time. His motive was sadism, sex slavery, and murder. Mm-hmm. Um, he. Don't look at the spider right there. It's okay. I can't kill them anymore. Um. I wouldn't kill it, but I don't want it on me. It's kind of close and scary. So I would. To a. If I die flick. from the spider, then thanks Buddhism book. <laughs> All right. Put my feet up just so it doesn't climb up me. Paul. Okay. So I know. Could it's heading trailer. down on the wall. They could go up the trailer, though. I know, and this blanket is like perfect. Sorry, hold on. Okay. Looking that spider is very methodical. I feel like it's high up on the evil scale. Maybe 17? It's methodically marching towards us. It's like sidestepping. It's right But it's like. Choo, 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 yeah. choo, 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 yes, exactly. Okay, so. David Parker, I'm surprised I haven't heard of this man, um, sentenced to 224 years. His scale of evil is 22, so he tops the top of the chart. He tortured and killed his victims in a homemade $100,000 torture chamber, um, which he called his toy box. Oh, I've heard of the toy have box you, killer. Have you? This is him. This is him. Oh, this it, is way fucked up. Contained whips, chains, pulleys, straps, clamps, Leg spreader bars and surgical blade saws, like mm. messed up. This is the nightmare, like yes. right here. Yes, uh, there was also numerous sex toys, torture implements, and detailed diagrams showing different methods of inflicting pain. There was an electronic generating device that was used to torture a 12 volt motorized breast stretcher. Stretcher. So it would stretch and like pull out or like I think yeah I think it's an uh, out yeah no I know his daughter was convicted of kidnapping one of his victims and his living girlfriend was known as the mistress she's the one I watched a documentary she was released three years ago so she enticed like she, she helped gather everything, victims everything I watched is she was just as involved in the kidnapping and sex torture as he was. So I am so interested in these partner killings well, where like, like a significant other. She was like, what is that? A five or a six? Get, what was that? get victims and participates in it. Like the partner usually isn't like the main one that thinks of it, but as part of go. like it's their a, codependency. It's rated as a three. No, that doesn't mean much. No. Fun. Well, and that's, I was like, what do you mean she was released? What do you what do you mean? That makes no sense. And yeah, and it Well maybe it's because on their own they wouldn't do her, it. Her name was Cindy. Um she was re released three years ago. Um, but she was charged for kidnapping and rape. So after it was like the mid nineteen nineties, you were required to serve at least eighty five percent of your sentence. But prior to that, it was it was much less. So she only served uh, eighteen years total. For this and then she gets released her only thing she had to create was like a plan for her release of where she was gonna live that was it that's it she's like out there she's out there maybe I should do a topic sometime on this partner stuff because it's interesting it's very, very interesting I agree yeah, I agree and so, I can kind of see how if you had such a deep fear of losing your person that you would eventually get into the place where you're helping them kill people absolutely and i just want to play just a this one's very short um just a statement that he says uh and here we go here we go and it's exactly what i want you to do he laughs so, so he said you will probably scream a lot that's exactly what i want you to do it turns me on so that the pain is pleasure for him. The pain is pleasure, but like beyond the point of normal. And that's BDSM again stuff. his motive was sadism, sex, slavery, and murder. So it's all mm, kind of in there, right? Okay, that fits. Yep. So Parker was caught when one of his victims escaped. That escaping victim is key. Oh my goodness! Like if you can try to escape, just, it's just worth try. it. Just, just try. try. Just try. Never. I learned that in the self defense class too. Like, don't get into the trunk. Don't get into the car. Like, do, Fight. 
fight, do everything you can to get away because it's better to die struggling outside of that car than to go somewhere where they're going to torture you and but sexually abuse you. And you might get that away. That being said, like that's the survival tip, but that being said, we it's do not harder. want to victim shame and understand that people oh, have different... Yes stress responses and freeze maybe your response and then you're not going to have that ability outside of your control to fight or run you're just going to and freeze I, and i think that's where like people who have this training it may amaze them like okay i knew i knew what to do and i yes, didn't do it yes. and that's where the guilt comes up and yes shame. yes i but, should have tried to yeah, run yeah, why yeah, didn't yeah. i yeah so we don't exactly. want to shame no if you can if you can find it in your capacity. Yes. Well, um, I've been able to don't. do that, and I've not been able to do that. I've had multiple Oh, yeah, you've been attacked by people. Yeah, legit. many times. And so when the one guy was, like, strangulating me, like, seriously, I didn't have it. I didn't find that thing to fight until I was starting to, like, have the fuzzies. In yeah, my your, like, life was going. And then I was just, like, I have to, like, do something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it kicked in it helped but not for a while and to, and again it's like the that fear is so like we legit have a freeze response your brain yes it's tries, legitimate if you're overwhelmed you. and you feel like those other options aren't possible or if you have such, some kind of history where of trauma of trauma yeah. where those responses were just not available to you your go-to is gonna be freeze yeah and there's no shame there that's just, absolutely not it's outside of your control Yep, and that's okay. Um, it's hard. It really is hard because, and yes. I think, I think it, it I does think so. come up of like, why didn't you fight? Why didn't you blah yeah. blah? Well, okay. I think if you have training, though, like if you have an opportunity to go out there and do self defense training, it helps. That's going to give you that muscle memory. Where did that spider go? It's completely it's gone. It's completely gone. It's probably going to come up on one Under of our this, feet, and yeah. then I'm going to freak the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> you should see me in the middle of the night. Like, I'll wake up, there'll be a thing, and I'll, I'll do the flick, and then yeah. I will leap, like, in my sleep, <laughs> five to ten feet, flick on the light, and, like, turn and try to find it. Your feet are, are your feet are up. Okay, we're no, good. I, again. Okay. My, every, everything's I up. Or, so... We're levitating, basically. Yes, exactly. So, um, no we shame. We live life, but no, fuck you, spiders. Exactly. And no shame, by the way, for how you handle this. Um, but what we do know is that the more you practice something, the more your yes. brain will go to that. Yes, so absolutely. Go take, if you know that you may be predisposed. It's a Krav Maga. Krav Maga is great. Go and take those classes. Get it where that's what your brain mm -hmm, goes mm -hmm. to, um, if you can. And yes. I should take some Krav Maga. You want to take from my gun again? I fuck, yeah, I fucking do. Let's do it. All right. Cool. All right. So um, he ended up actually dying after eight months after sentencing of a heart attack. Wow. A little less long in the pen. Didn't they? No. No. Okay. So the last person I'm going to talk about is Richard Chase. I actually don't have audio for him. I couldn't find them. Dang it. I know, but I'm I, liking these like audio. I know bits. I have some good information though. Like Richard Chase was really interesting to me, and there wasn't much about him. Um, Do you find yourself believing their audio bits? Or are you kind of like, are you just saying what you think that they want to hear? Because but that's the whole thing. That's the narcissism, right? Like, because maybe that's not even true, what they say. I don't know. I'm just always, like, looking, like, trying to see, like, do they seem honest? Do they seem... Well, that last one, like, um, I, I really feel like that was an overheard report. Like, I don't think he would have said that. Because it was like he was saying it to someone. Okay. In my opinion. Okay. Uh, the ones, especially the Night Stalker ones, you can see it on his face. Like, he starts to smile when he knows that you're trying to catch him. And so, he's, he's so smart. cat. High intelligence for that dude. Um, yeah. Okay. Creepy. So Richard Chase, that's that. His I've never heard of Richard Chase. Okay. So or have I? American six it. victims. Um, he only had one month. One month he killed six people. So if you think about some of these people that span decades, like this is a lot that, of impact in one. So month. there was like a lot of build up and then yes, letting go. Okay. His motive, the first one listed, cannibalism. Mm. And then number two, drinking the victim's blood and necrophilia. Okay. Favorite method of killing shooting. 
So this is like kind of what I was talking See, about earlier. See, that seems contradictory to Doesn't me. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? Okay, so here's where I'm going to get. You're separate, but then you're so intimate I'm with the drinking of the blood. get a little convoluted here. So he was a victim of abuse at the hands of his mother. We do know that growing up. He did exhibit symptoms of um, sociopathic behavior, animal cruelty, bedwetting, all of those traditional things. However, um, okay, and I'll act, I'm going to backtrack. He also captured, killed, dis, disemboweled animals. Um, he would then devour them raw and would mix raw organs with Coca-Cola in a blender and consume it. Chase believed that by ingesting the animals, it would prevent his heart from shrinking. Okay, so mm. I'm going to get to another part here. So he, I know this person. He's from California. Yeah. He willingly went to a psychiatrist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he ended up walking out after a 72-day hold. Um, they said that there could be psychosis or psychosis influenced by drugs, perhaps, a drug-induced psychosis. But... I, across these different um, things I researched, I found a, quite a few statements he made that makes me think psychosis is a thing for him. I because, always thought that. I always yeah. thought he was lower on the evil scale because he's he, a 17. He's a 17, not a 22 like the other two. Okay. I would, might even put him lower because I feel like. No, you know, mental illness really is a play here. Like, I don't know that I agree. he I really think, understood what he was doing. I think it's because doing. there was, one, the level of severity that he did. And then, two, was he did acknowledge that what he did was wrong, and he knew that. So he acknowledged those two things in court. But did he have control over himself? And that's what's iffy because at some times he said that it was almost like he didn't remember parts of it. There were times when he said that he remembered for the details. So I'm like, glad you brought this case. Very this case is always on my mind as like, Does, could this even yeah. be a serial killer? Exactly. Um, and, okay, yes. So some of the thoughts that came up, I know, I don't know, I got my toes up. At one point he stated that Nazis were directed by UFOs. He also said that others, even other people, reported that he had bizarre behavior, often had drug use. So if there's drug use and use. And hadn't he just started college? Like he just moved away yep. from home. Yep. Yeah. Um, so he, that's a big change. He, that's a stressor. He nailed shut his door because he felt people were too close. I want to do that. <laughs> he went to the ER once to find who stole his pulmonary artery. Yeah, so that's delusional. That's sort of delusional, right there. absolutely. It gets. Um, he felt he again went to the ER once because he felt the the bone of his skull was coming out of the back of his head. Delusional disorder. Delusional disorder. He felt his stomach was backwards. Delusional disorder. He also felt that many times his heart would stop beating. Um, and he often said that some of the reason why he was drinking blood of his victims was because he felt he had a blood disorder and this helped the blood disorder. Right, because he needs to like refresh his yeah, bad blood with exactly. good blood. Exactly. So to me, like this is psychosis. Yes. Psychosis For that sure. was this is mental illness. Mental illness, absolutely. Which I mean, to be fair, the yes, other mental psych illness as well. Yes. But and um, social is a mental illness, but. I mean, Should there's, it it's, I think there's that line between, I think what they're trying to d decide was, was their choice or not? Were there opportunities or not? And they did end up ruling that he had opportunities to not act in or engage. But I feel like that's easy to say when you're not the person with the delusional You're not the disorder. person that's like, my yeah. fucking heart stopped. What do you want me to do, people? Okay, so I'm going to explain a little bit about why. He was like called the vampire, right? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. He was the vampire of Sacramento. Yes, that's, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. that's right. So some of the reasons why is because some of the things get a little brutal here. It was. It was a little brutal. Was there so, some racism, though, also? Because he was part of Asian, wasn't he? I, I mean, he doesn't. Oh, I didn't see him. From my memory, I think he was okay. part of Asian. And I know. Come into play. I can't tell from your weird ass yeah, freaking picture. I'm gonna look him up on my phone. Right there. 
He looks part. I don't know. He, he looks, looks like half. Jeff, he looks like Jeffrey Dahmer. Just with brown hair. Richard Chase is his name. Yeah. Um, okay, so Richard Chase, Asian. Okay, but let me tell you this one thing before you get all high and mighty. Okay? I'm not high and mighty okay. ever. I'm low and mighty. Let me just tell you this: He kidnapped a baby. Oh, no. Decapitated the baby, shot it in the head, Fuck that. and then drained its blood to drink it. So this is where, like, yes, psychosis was at play, but the level was so severe that, like, I mean, how are you going to release this person and not worry about the safety of other people? No, and this is a systemic thing, I think, too, here. Yes, because, like, support systems and medication and mental health treatment. It's called the Dracula Killer. I, yeah, I saw the back of Vampire of Sacramento. Mm -hmm. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Um, so. Right, maybe I made up that he was pretty. I think you made it up. I didn't say anything about it. Um, I remember something about that, though, because it, it, like, there, it up, there was something. Know, no, I, I looked briefly okay. on the Wikipedia, but I didn't say anything. Okay, okay. So. But I, I feel like that had factored something in with the mother and maybe some. Barriers with her being listened to with her concern. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. I, might, I, I actually I might have dreamed all this. I didn't find anything about like mom or anybody saying any concerns. I might have dreamed all of this. Okay. Or I might so be confusing. He him was with involuntarily else. committed to a mental institution after being taken to the hospital for blood poisoning, which he contracted from injecting rabbit's blood into his veins. Yes, the rabbit's blood. Yes. Chase was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia and was treated with psychotropic drugs. Um, he was deemed to no longer be a threat and was released in 1967. We got some so how long treatment. was he inpatient? Um, it was within, I believe, a year that okay. he was then released. Um, after killing a second victim who was pregnant, Chase had sex with her corpse, mutilated it, and bathed in the woman's blood. So I believe this is the one I looked up. He actually, like, rearranged her organs in her body. He did put the kidneys back, but he pulled out other organs. There was a yogurt cup that she was probably eating when he came into the house. But he had, like, there was blood in it, so it looked like he had used the cup to drink the blood. Um, we just ran this recycle. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. Even with the baby killing, which yes, is yes. atrocious, I still feel like he was not killing to kill. Like, there was another reason. Yes. This is why he's a 17. Well, I feel like there should be lower, even. I don't. I Look at your poor hand with your good. peanut wound still. I know. Oh, my for... God. That's terrible. I know. Thank you for acknowledging my peanut wounds. You need some so... aloe. Chase engaged in necrophilia and cannibalism with all his female victims. At his last crime scene, he kidnapped a six-year-old girl and later killed her, drank her blood, ate her organs before disposing her body at a church. So he killed a couple kids. A couple kids, a pregnant woman. Like, the level of severity, there's no way a court's going to, like, lean in his way. Yeah, in all honesty. Yeah. Um, so he was found guilty on six counts of first-degree murder, the jury rejected the argument of not guilty by reason of insanity and he was sentenced to death. Okay. So, so he was executed. I did watch like some of the But should they have let him out from the impatient? I mean, is there some systemic culpability? He hadn't here? killed anybody at that juncture. Like nobody knew anything. Okay, he hadn't killed he anybody. He had not at that point. So I don't think so. Okay. Um I mean now we have Volk Tarasov. I think a little more protection on the front end. Chase's fellow inmates even feared him. Um, finding out the graphic and bizarre details of his crime, they often tried to convince Chase to commit suicide. So, on December 26, 1980, he did commit oh. suicide from ingesting a large amount of antidepressants, which he was hoarding in his cell. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Why would his jail co-mates tell him to kill himself? Because he has a mental health diagnosis that's probably like one where I'm you're treated. where you're scared of him because you don't know what he's gonna do and you've heard about his history and but also he must be persuaded like friendly enough to be persuadable like that's the kind of character I'm seeing which to me reads it I mean it is all 
schizophrenia. Yeah, it's, it's just sad. It's schizophrenia. It's sad. He it was untreated. More severe treatment, like a higher level yes, of care yes. for sure. I don't think it disregards. I think once he started committing the murders at the level that he committed the murders, um, he was so entrenched in those delusions that he probably was a public safety threat. But prior, I think there was a window, and that window was missed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so he killed himself. Yes. And so I think that, and again, like, none of the others, like, it was, you know, Dahmer was killed by a cellmate. Like, nobody else, the other one's a heart attack, is uh, is killing themselves. That's mental health. That's depression. Yes. yes. That's, like, being Pressure. No, the other two were too narcissistic. Why would they take themselves out? Exactly, which to me speaks more of serial killer. Yes. I would say that this was serial murders by someone who was yes. a I'm glad you brought this disorder. case because this is the case that I've always thought should not be a serial killer. Yeah, and he's listed in there. And I think he's brought up because the killings were horrific, so horrific. and graphic. Yeah. But I've always felt like that was wrong. Like that was more well. And I think that like untreated they, mental health issues and very sad. Yeah, and I think for everybody, for put him a lot and of, the victims, a lot of stock in the like. Well, why did he? You know, why bring them to the church? Why do like why? So have they thought that was calculated. The baby's box organized. at the church, and his response was, "Well, I was going to go back to it because I wanted the blood to drain out more." Like it was all very like, I mean, in a sense, practical. It's sort of simplistic. Practical. Like, I yeah. need to do this in order to have this so I don't get blood poisoning. I need to, like, it was always well, a Well, yeah, these health delusions. Yeah, that that's, what, consistent I, that's all what I wrote down in my paper. I said health delusions because it was, everything was related to health. The bone coming out of my head, yeah. my stomach inside that's out. That's a major category of delusional disorder it is, is yeah. these <laughs> medical health delusions where you think, something is wrong with and, your body and from what i saw like throughout his whole life those were major things that not even just body he just felt there was something wrong with him and so if you had a delusional type disorder it's going to cling on whatever is there in the moment and yeah so i wanted to bring that one in because i felt like it was a good contrast but it kind of gets yes. pumped into that category i'm so glad you brought that one up Woo, i'm done and the AC is finally kicking in. Is it? No, it's, it got cool. Oh, outside. it's nighttime. It's nighttime. That's what it is. Nighttime. It just doesn't look like nighttime on here. <laughs> okay. What was your topic again? The Turpin family house Thank of you. horrors. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Until next time. If you suspect kids are being abused and neglected, please report it. Please report it. And. Anyone can be a, a victim of a crime, so let's listen to anyone who says that they are. Listen. Thank you. Thank so, you. Bye.